I'm Dr. Jeremy Pierce from the International Tin Association, and this presentation is a review of Tin Green Tech R&D at uh, December 2020. So ITA curates about 5,000 scientific abstracts every year related to tin, and this particular category is a significant um, part of that. And I'm going to show you some very interesting case studies of some of the leading technology uh, R&D that we're seeing today. The context is the green industrial revolution. This is a broad ranging policy and technology led uh, initiative transitioning from fossil fuels to electricity uh, and involving a whole range of renewable energy technologies, both in terms of storage and uh, generation, and also includes electric vehicles to, to reduce emissions, as well as a range of policy and technologies ready to a, a green planet to clean up our planet, uh, make it a cleaner and greener planet for future generations. This is particularly uh, interesting for tin. Tin is an amazing element. And as, you, as you'll see, uh, it has a very broad range of very interesting technical properties. And that means it can uh, play in all of these fields. And uh, I'll show you that in the case studies that I'm going to share with you today. First category of uh, technologies, really technologies for energy storage. Tin already uh, is uh, involved in this area through its use in lead acid batteries. This is um, a very old technology, but one that is still very important as we're coming into the, um, this green revolution. We um, still very important technology for uh, storing energy uh, in various different ways. Tin is added to the grids of um, tin lead acid batteries, about 0.8, 1.2% or sometimes, sometimes a bit more. The most interesting market for tin at the moment is the hybrid vehicle start stock market, so-called mild hybrids. Uh, and in particular, we're looking at the US and truck markets, which we think might grow and be a new uh, phase of opportunity for, for tin in this particular market. So uh, we're watching that very closely. But as we all know, uh, lithium ion technologies are advancing very fast and uh, the R&D for tin in this particular area is prolific. Actually, uh, we're finding about up to 20 scientific abstracts every month uh, on tin in lithium ion technologies in various ways, especially coming from from China. Tin tin can do a lot of things actually inside uh, inside lithium ion batteries. Um, mainly it improves conductivity. Uh, both electrical and lithium ion conductivity. Uh, you'll hear a lot about silicon uh, in the anodes, uh, and it's actually the case that tin is synergistic with, with silicon, um, and it can improve the properties of, of silicon, actually. Uh, we're also, in terms of anodes, which is the main focus for these technologies, seeing some papers on, on tin foils and tin metallic products that could be used instead of the copper. Currently, they use a copper foil uh, with the graphite coating. Um, but the tin is active for, for lithium. Um, copper isn't, and that, that generally means that uh, the total energy density of the assembly uh, can, be, uh, can be improved. And so that's an interesting area that we're, <clears throat> we're also seeing. Then, but already the next generation after lithium ion is uh, coming, and that's even more likely to use tin. So uh, the focus there is sodium iron, uh, which is basically salt, is cheaper and easier uh, than um, lithium to, to use. Uh, and it's uh, at the moment, the R&D is progressing very fast and uh, matching, almost matching lithium ion performance. We're also seeing magnesium iron and potassium iron technologies in, in that space. Tin is also being evaluated for some of the larger scale batteries for, for so-called flow batteries. These are, these are used for utility grid storage and also liquid metal batteries, which are another technology being explored for that particular space. So there's a number of tin technologies in the next generation that are very interesting. So I'll show you some case studies of some of those, uh, just to give you an idea of the sort of thing that we're seeing. So this is very recent research from uh, a Korean uh, university. Uh, and it's on sodium ions and shows that, uh, as we've already said, sodium ion is cheaper and safer than lithium. This particular example is using a tin phosphide uh, with a carbon anode uh, and a vanadium cathode 
And the important thing from this technology uh, research is showing that the performance was comparable to, to lithium ion. In fact, outstanding uh, is the uh, quote there. And so this technology, sodium ion, is, 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 is advancing. And uh, this picture I show you there is, is Faradion uh, battery. That's a UK based uh, organization promoting and forwarding sodium ion battery technology. So this is certainly a very interesting space for Tim, and we'll be watching that quite closely. Another example here from Shenzhen University is um, tin iron flow batteries. So I mentioned these earlier, uh, and this is where renewable energy like wind and solar needs to have large scale batteries there. Obviously, there's, they don't uh, generate electricity all the time, depends when it's windy, when the sun is out. So you need, you need to have massive energy storage to balance that load. And it's these kind of technologies that we're talking about here. So these flow batteries or redox batteries, is, um, vanadium, vanadium batteries are, are sort of the main, the main type at the moment. Um, but there are other types and this particular tin iron uh, redox flow battery is being looked at in Shenzhen. And this particular interesting paper is looking at exactly how it works and concludes that uh, if you're going to use tin, then it's better to use a more porous tin carbon electrode. So that's an interesting piece of work highlighting uh, tin in this particular space too. Moving on to the next category, um, which is actually tin technologies for generating electricity. Um, clearly, we have uh, solar cells, uh, also tin for um, harvesting heat energy and tin also in hydrogen um, technologies. Solar cells is an area which has been growing of interest for tin in the last uh, few years and particularly looking at, uh, at now new tin perovskite or usually tin, tin lead perovskite. Alongside CZTS, which is a copper zinc tin sulfide material, this is a thin film, as you can see in the picture on the top left there, uh, which is uh, active for converting sunlight to electricity. It's also worth noting that uh, as you, if you peer closely at that, you'll see uh, it can also has conductive tin oxide layers, uh, which are part of the assembly there, these thin films. And it's also worth remembering that in this particular field, uh, there's a lot of potential uh, already for, for solar ribbon, which is a copper uh, copper ribbon coated with uh, tin or solder for the connectors to connect these panels together. So that's just quite a, a set of uh, opportunities for tin in solar, um, but we're most interested in, in uh, this case, in the science of behind the tin, tin perovskites in particular. And I'll show you a couple, an example of that. And in terms of heating, harvesting heat energy, uh, it's worth remembering that 60% uh, of US energy is lost as, as waste heat and that uh, tin selenide or tin selenium compounds, uh, so-called thermoelectric materials, are theoretically the best uh, on paper for this particular um, conversion, actually. Uh, and there's quite a bit of work on tin selenide or, or tin sulfide, as I'll show you, uh, in this particular space. But in terms of the hydrogen economy, the third category there, uh, there's much work looking at new ways to produce and use hydrogen uh, quite a lot of hydrogen is generated using fossil fuels, and it's desirable to try to find new other, other ways to do that. And one of the ways is to split water in sunlight, which uh, can be done with, with various tin catalysts. Um, and so that's an interesting area for sure. And when you want to use that hydrogen to power a bus or uh, a lorry, something like that, you need a fuel cell. A fuel cell uh, recombines the hydrogen uh, and makes electricity from that reaction. And again, tin is a good catalyst for that reaction too. So I'll show you a few case studies uh, so that you can get some idea where this research is at. This is from uh, Nanjing University, just published. Uh, and this is the team you see in the top left there showing you their uh, new uh, tin perovskite material. Um, this kind of materials are being um, perhaps used uh, on, would, would be used on um, what's called tandem cells, where you're, you're painting or pasting the, the thin film on top of existing solar panels or even on, on buildings, on windows, to give you a cheap transparent layer. Uh, and then that generates electricity from, from the sunshine. Um, and as I mentioned, also the tin oxide layers to generate and conduct, sorry, conduct electricity. This particular piece of research uh, in the, the Nanjing team there achieved a very high uh, rate of efficiency. Uh, between 21.7 uh, and in the, in the lab 25.6, which is a very um, 
high uh, efficiency for this technology. You probably can't see the graph on the bottom left very clearly, but where I've circled there, uh, you can see the tin perovskite, the yellow dots inside the red line. That has shown you that, as you can see over the last decade, that technology has really shot up in importance and is now competing uh, alongside very close to existing silicon technologies. And those kind of percentages are, are certainly where we need to be. And so this research is quite interesting, aside from this team. In terms of the what I mentioned earlier in uh, converting tin to using tin to convert heat to uh, electricity, the so-called thermoelectric. This is a piece of work coming from Oak Ridge National Laboratory in the US. Um, and we've seen quite a bit of work in this area, including uh, tin sulfide, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, I saw a paper with uh, tin sulfide uh, generated, collecting heat generated from a quite a large scale um, factory uh, kind of pilot plant. And that was very interesting. Uh, but this particular research is looking at uh, the actual uh, rather complex science behind heat transfer in structures. And uh, in layman's terms, what they discovered was that when tin sulfide were heated, they become floppy. And uh, so the structure changes and that traps the heat. And that's why uh, tin uh, is such a good heat harvester. So that was a discovery and that was published quite recently. This is an interesting one comes from a Turkish uh, research agency. Uh, this is to do with microbial fuel cells. So this is what I mentioned earlier when when we're recombining the hydrogen generating hydrogen into electricity the other way. Um, what we do there is, in this case, they used a tin copper, tin coated copper mesh. And uh, they actually took local lake water, as you can see in the diagram bottom left, some kind of a cell like that, uh, put the use a tin copper uh, mesh and generated electricity using uh, using the microbial activity. Very interesting technology, this one. And the uh, end result of that was uh, they, they generated the highest energy density to date, actually, uh, and that was very interesting and a very simple, straightforward, very environmentally friendly, I would say, uh, kind of technology. And uh, we'll be watching that space for sure. It's another area where tin is particularly good. Um, it can actually um, work here to, to turn not only split water, but in sunlight, but also to degrade or break up uh, um, organic materials. And so this work from uh, these universities just published, one was working on waste formaldehyde, which is an industrial uh, product, yeah, and uh, other was on alcohols. And they just use sunlight, basically putting the catalyst into uh, the, the pollutant material and uh, the sunlight uh, converted with the tin to, um, to hydrogen and, and also at the same time cleaned up the pollution. The, the story here is that uh, precious metals are commonly used, but they are as obviously very expensive. And uh, by using them alongside tin, which is actually quite quite common in catalysis, synergistic, uh, then tin makes it makes it cheaper and more efficient. The other piece of work there was with uh, this tin oxide um, polyvalent material, and uh, they showed there that the layer structure um, of of this particular material made it um, very efficient and, and faster than other metals. So this is an interesting. Um, uh, case study in this area. I'm sure we'll see a lot more in that space too. In terms of the uh, fuel cell side, um, here is some interesting piece of work from quite a prestigious consortium, as you can see from uh, from the logos there. This is again looking at um, the catalysts that are used in, in fuel cells, for example, for, for hydrogen buses. Um, as we mentioned already, platinum is expensive um, and uh, their whole um, focus of the research is looking for cheaper alternatives. Conventionally, at the moment, iron, iron catalysts are, are being, uh, being looked at and um, these kind of complex materials. This piece of work, particular piece of work, was looking at uh, tin uh, analogues of the iron materials. And they found and discovered that these catalysts are 40, 40 to 50 percent higher current density. Obviously, that's very important. And not only that, but uh, with some better reaction pathways. So this was a very interesting uh, highlight for tin very recently published. Lastly, uh, looking at some tin technologies for a greener planet. So this includes um, three categories we put here, carbon capture catalysts, water treatment technologies, and those technologies for recovering tin from, from waste. 
In terms of carbon capture, this is extremely important. You've heard quite a bit about that. Uh, certainly ca carbon capture and storage, but this, this particular technology falls into the category of CCU, carbon technology, carbon capture utilization, I should say. And uh, in the case of tin, quite a lot of the compounds here are tin, tin copper based compounds typically, uh, and they convert uh, carbon uh, dioxide into useful, useful products. Um, and the tin root generally produces a formate uh, which can be used for dyeing, printing, and other industrial uses. And this is very important, and needless, needless to say, uh, the kind of technologies. So we're very keen to see how that work progresses for, for tin. In terms of water treatment technologies, this is about, as I already mentioned, removing pollutants from water using, using sunlight. That's something that tin can do. Uh, and also, uh, because tin is a strongly reducing agent to able to reduce metals too, so chromium, lead, arsenic and so on from, from drinking water, and I'll show you an example of that. And lastly, recovering tin from waste is very important, so as we can see the tin demands will probably increase, and on the supply side we, we're really looking to uh, secondary sources to increase the amount of, of recycling, uh, and one of the most important areas we want to see that in is from e-waste from circuit boards. And uh, that's what we've been we've been able to work ourselves, and it's very interesting now we're seeing uh, some new work in that area too. There's also growing interest in in detinning tin plate, um, and new processes for making that more economically viable. And the third area we've recently started looking at is lead acid battery recycling slags, where quite a bit of tin uh, could be potentially recovered if we had the right technology. So I'll just show you a couple of case studies from that. Lastly. Here is some uh, selection of work, actually, there's quite a bit of work in the last, just from the last month or two, there's four pieces of work we found here on uh, carbon, carbon capture and utilization using tin. Tin uh, in this particular field, this particular type is one of the most promising candidates. Um, and so the examples here from these um, universities are tin cobalt copper alloy foams, which is quite typical. Tin on carbon, again, quite a lot of th those products. A uh, more sophisticated version, which is a, like a 2D nano sheet of, of tin. Uh, see a bit of that, more higher technology. And again, the same tin oxides, uh, in this case, SN203 uh, is an example. You see that in the picture, bottom bottom left. Um, and so um, these technologies are uh, moving forward quite fast and uh, are very interesting for us. In the case of uh, water treatment uh, with tin ions, um, this is a company called Aqua Metrology Systems, and essentially they're generating tin ions electrically from, from using just a, a tin bar, uh, and this produces uh, so stannous ions or tin 2 plus ions. These are leach into the water, they react in the water, neutralizing chromium and other metals. As you're probably aware, California has a very big problem with chromium in its drinking water, and uh, this, this project has been very interesting, but AMS also uh, now looking at a wide range of other applications in, in water treatment for, for water treatment in wells and also in water tanks, probably even looking at uh, reducing corrosion in, in water tanks. So this is an interesting piece of work. You can find that on our website too. In terms of recovering uh, tin and other metals from e-waste, uh, as I mentioned, this is very important. The company called uh, Envirileach in Canada, uh, and again, you'll, put, you'll see that on our website. They've generated a new chemistry for uh, for recovering precious metals from uh, from e-waste and other materials. Pretty uh, similar to the sort of urban mining idea. They're, they're using a, a non-cyanide water-based uh, technology uh, to pre-concentrate metals, extract and refine them. Uh, and they've found some very early and very interesting positive results with tin, and we're very keen to follow that work. Not many people, in fact, uh, know that uh, tin is on a uh, circuit board. You can see it on the top left there. Sometimes I have to, to show people there's about two or, two or three percent of, of uh, tin as solder in e-waste, and certainly huge potential for that to be recovered if we can get the technology right. Lastly, uh, very recently, we've been talking to Coventry University here in the UK and uh, doing a very interesting piece of work, again recovering a broad range of metals um, by crushing, leaching and electrowinning. Uh, in, uh, particularly copper, you can see that in the bottom left there, they've, they've managed to electrowin copper from, from these materials, but they're using bacteria. So essentially this is a bio-leaching um, uh, experiment and uh, the very latest results, which you can see there in the bottom left, not 
not yet published, showing 100% tin recovery from this uh, leaching using bacteria. It's a very interesting uh, approach because it's very sustainable, obviously, very low energy. And uh, this uh, Coventry University is using uh, bacteria to do that. They're working with uh, uh, some uh, UK-based US processes and some fairly major IT suppliers. So we're very interested in that piece of work and uh, we've published it on our website and you'll see more about that, I'm sure. So that was a very um, broad ranging review of the various technologies that are there and uh, hopefully highlight a few very interesting pathways and I hope encourage people to to consider TIN and to look at TIN in these uh, this R&D. If you want to see more about uh, these technologies, you visit our, our website, International TIN Association. Go to the uh, What We Do tab on the top menu, drop down to New Technologies, and you'll see some of the work uh, that we're tracking there. Thank you for your attention.